Okay, good. For those of you who don't know me, my name is TJ Tennant, and I'm the president of Tennant & Associates. Tennant & Associates is actually two companies. One of them is a bunch of engineers who testify in court and go out and do accident investigation and tire forensics. The other group is the tire guy. And if you can see my screen here, the guy here, Jerry, Jerry's the director of training. I spent, I don't know, 15, 20 years at Bridgestone with Jerry, especially during the Firestone Ford fiasco. And uh, he's not only an employee, he's a trusted friend. The guy on the right is Griff Allen, who I've known probably 30 years. And Griff is our, our chief operations officer. And he kind of keeps me on track when he can keep up with me. I think he's going to tie me down with a leash or something. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about tenant associates because I got about eight hours of stuff to share with you guys in about 45 minutes. So I'm not going to delay. I'm going to just move forward. Uh, one of the things that I hear a lot from EVT technicians is they switch tires. They go from the OEM tire to uh, a different manufacturer that they've had experience before or they didn't have experience with before. And they say, hey, I'm getting tread squirm and the, the, the drivers complain the vehicles all, all over the road and we check air pressure and all those things. There are a lot of things that can cause tread squirm. And if I seem like I'm excited, I love talking about tires. I'm not on crack or anything. <laughs> I just love what I do. So when you decide to change tires, and this is the second slide for a purpose because this is a big topic in the EVT community. And say for instance, you start out your OEM tire on the drives is at 23, 30 seconds. You wanna go to more, a more aggressive tire or something. And you go to this tire over here and it's at 30, 30 seconds. Well, here's the problem. You've now got seven extra 30 seconds of tread depth, and that's going to produce something called tread squirm. A lot of you think, well, maybe it's in the sidewall. It's got a softer sidewall. I've heard that. That could be true, but that's not what they're feeling. What they're feeling is this extended tread, and it's moving around. And just like when you buy a brand new tire for your personal vehicle, it feels a little squirmy, and as the tread wears down, you get a lot more stability in that tire. Kind of like when you have a, pen, a pencil with an eraser, when the eraser's new, it's bending and flexing. And then as the eraser gets down to nothing, then there's no squirm. Same thing with the tires. So there's several things you need to consider. Number one, you can go back with the OEM brand tire. Uh, that's the one that was designed for that apparatus and you probably should stay with it if you can. But other times, it's going to be an open shoulder like this tire here. This one's got a little bit of a shoulder. This one's got an open shoulder. And you may want to look at going to a closed shoulder design. So even though this one has 29, 30 seconds, and, and these are just examples to help you guys understand what I'm saying. These aren't recommendations. Uh, it's going to have, it's not going to squirm as much as this one because the shoulders are locked in. And even with this one, it's similar in tread depth, but the shoulders are uh, less open than these. And so you're gonna feel less of that tread squirm. So that in, to, to close this topic out, the things that you need to look for when you experience that tread squirm or when the driver's saying, I'm getting some squirm with these new tires, I don't like them, is how much air pressure and how much tread depth, because you can easily go from a 20, 23, 30 seconds to a 30, 30 seconds. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing your research to look for new tires or you may want to go to something with a closed shoulder design. Uh, those are the three things that you need to be looking for if you decide to switch away from the OEM tire. Or the easiest thing you can do, and a lot of you already do this, is you can pick up the phone and call TJ Tennant. So if you get a copy of this presentation, my direct phone number is actually on the bottom. You call, I'm going to answer, unless I'm busy or something, just leave me a, a voicemail or you can email me and I will always be there to help you. Uh, if you don't have this book, uh, I'm just going to say, wow, because this is the book that tells you how much air pressure you should run in the tires that you purchase. And we're going to get into air pressure and stuff a little bit later on, but you need to have this book in your shop. Uh, I'm not going to worry about this one too much or the next one, because those are involved in accident investigation, which we're going to talk about a little bit as well. Uh, I would not be employed if everyone did what they're supposed to do. And Eric brought, just brought up a fabulous point about following NFPA procedures and policies. And the, the thousand, he's, he's right, literally thousands of accident, uh, accidents every year. 
and we cover everything. So hopefully if you ever see me again, it's in a, a venue like this, or I'm visiting you guys, or you, I'm answering the phone, or we're on a Zoom call. If you see me at, on the opposing side because you made an error, or you didn't, or you think you didn't make an error, your day is going to go downhill very, very quickly. I may seem like a teddy bear. Uh, don't let that fool you. I am not when it comes to protecting life and safety. So I was really happy to hear Eric talk so much about safety. That's really important. But tires are probably some of the most important things that you got to deal with. The most important things in any fleet is going to be obviously payroll and fuel, but tires are more important than both of those because you're going to get into saving someone's life in case something happens. So tires are expensive, yes, but it is really imperative that you get that right. So a little bit, we're going to go through some passenger, but mostly commercial. And basically, these are the things that help you understand what a tire is. The first part is a P or an LT, or you can have nothing there if it's Eurometric. And this is metric. And it's not the width of the tread. It is the width from sidewall to sidewall when the tire is mounted on the wheel and inflated. That's what this means. And it's in millimeters. That's why you can see two tires the same size. And the tread width looks different. That's why. And then obviously 6D is the height when the tire's new from the top of the rim to the top of the tread. And that's a percentage of this number right here. And then, sorry about that, R is for radial and then it's 16 uh, uh, as far as the, the rim size. Uh, you don't see a lot of these anymore and forget these illustrations. I just wanna show you what I'm talking about as far as the difference between a radial tire and a bias ply tire. This is biased because there are two plies and they go at angles like that. You can also have a bias belted occasionally in mining tires and stuff like that. This is what we're gonna focus on today for the most part is a uh, radial commercial truck tire. And some people refer to them as a TBR tire. Now TBR just means truck and bus radial tire. And it's easy to tell because this one's got four belts on it. And the body plies go start here. They go around the bead, come here, and then turn up there. That's what a typical conventional commercial radial tire Ooh, looks bop, like. Boom, bop, doom, doom. I've got another puzzle for you. I love that song from Willy Wonka because tires are a puzzle for a lot of people. The people who think they know them don't really know them. The people who don't know them Sometimes they know what they don't know. Sometimes they don't know what they don't know, which is why I'm here today to try to help clear up a lot of the misnomers and things that you guys experience in the field. Basically on a passenger car tire, you got the inner liner, which replaces the, uh, the old uh, tubes. You've got the, the bead bundles, which hold the tire on the wheel. You got the bead filler, which is much harder and thicker on a commercial truck tire. And you'll usually have two of them. Uh, the body plies in a in a passenger and light truck tire, those body plies will made, be made of polyester or rayon or nylon. In a commercial truck tire, they're always steel. Cut and dried, no option. Then the sidewall, which is the skin of the tire, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the tire. Maximum air pressure, maximum load carrying capacity. What size is it? Where was it made? Uh, all the things that you really need to know and want to know. And then in the belt plies, this is a passenger and light truck tire. It's got two belts plus this cap ply commercial truck tire will have four belts. And then the tread, which actually is good in the wet. If you live in an area that never rains, you may not need a, uh, grooves in your tread. <laughs> but in most areas, it rains occasionally. So you, do, you will need grooves in those tires. And then getting to commercial, we've got all these different pieces to a commercial truck tire, the hard bead filler, soft. Hard bead, bead fillers for stability, soft bead filler is uh, for ride comfort. And when some of you say, hey, I went to this different tire, the sidewall softer, remember that's not what you're feeling. You're feeling the either the open shoulder or a deeper tread depth. And then these are all the other pieces in a commercial truck casing. Most of them are uh, cap based. And then you've got all these things which are similar to passenger and light truck, but there are a few uh, differences. Typically, if you replace, if you work with a passenger uh, car or a light truck in your fleet, or you have one in your fleet, sorry, it's really important 
to put the new tires on the on the rear. I'm going to show you a short one minute video of why that is important. You know, those things that are definitely not suppressors, even though I'm Lauren Davis from Michelin North America, and today we're going to talk about tire safety. It's important to check the pressure in your tires monthly and check your tread depth regularly, especially before a long road trip. When it comes time to replace the tires on your vehicle, ideally you want to replace all four tires at the same time. But if that's not possible, most experts recommend replacing two tires and putting them on the rear for maximum safety in wet conditions. Let's take a look at what happens when you replace two new tires and put them on the front. Now let's take a look at what happens when you replace two new tires and put them on the rear. So remember, there are three easy ways to check for tire safety. Number one, check the pressure in your tires. Number two, do the penny test to check for the tread wear. And number three, ideally install four new tires at one time, but if you can only install two, put them on the rear for maximum safety and wet conditions. Michelin. Okay, that's good. I'm not selling Michelin tires, so we're going to go through that a little bit more. Uh, repairing tires. I know some of you repair tires, some of you don't, some of you have a third party. It's really important to get that right. And lately, uh, we've had, I don't know, 30 new cases since January. And in all the commercial cases, whether it's with a fire apparatus or a commercial truck or an RV, uh, the repairs have not been done correctly. If you're not sure, or if you're not sure if your third party is doing those repairs correctly, these are the organizations that you need to Google or contact. And they actually have charts that they will send you for like a dollar or something to make sure you understand how to re repair a commercial or a passenger and light truck tire correctly. I, I, I'm really befuddled as why that's being screwed up so much here lately, but it is. So next, to properly repair a passenger or light truck tire, it has to be a patch plug combination. It cannot be a patch only because now you've left the injury open and these little dots here are steel belts. You get moisture on steel, nothing good happens to that. You can't use the little plug like you can buy from the local stop and rob or at Walmart because that's kind of like wicking the water up because these are fibrous materials. It pulls the water up and then holds the water on the steel. That's just as bad, if not worse. Has to be a patch plug combination. Some of them look like a mushroom where you and they're attached and you pull them through, but it's really important not only to repair a tire correctly, but to use the proper procedures to repair a tire. Commercial truck tires are a little bit different because you can actually repair a commercial truck tire in the sidewall. That's a special process and a special type of patch to do that. You can't use the patch like any of these that we see here to repair a sidewall in a commercial truck tire. You also cannot use the repair that you would use in the sidewall of a commercial truck tire to repair the sidewall of a passenger and light truck tire. Those, the, the sidewall of a passenger and light truck tire cannot be repaired, period, full stop. Tire aging, that seems to be a big topic on passenger and light truck tires after there's no law or anything, but here's the standard. After six years from the DOT date, it needs to be removed from the rim, inspected internally and externally uh, every year up until 10 years, and then it's recommended to be replaced. On fire apparatus, it's seven years, and I think it's five years for tankers on the front. Now, the big thing about that is every time there's an accident with uh, a, a volunteer fire department. They've got tires that have been on there 30 years and somebody's got to cut a check. I was on Facebook on the fat uh, Facebook page and there was a guy on there that actually wrote on that page, we only repair, replace our tires every 12 years. Guys, stop. If you're putting crap like that on Facebook, you have just opened your yourself, you personally up for liability. And if I'm on the other side, I'm coming after you. I'm just telling you up front, don't put that kind of crap on there, especially when the guy stated in the in the post that, yeah, I know what NFPA says. 
I do it 12 years. Well, you know what? Just go ahead and write a blank check, sign it, drop it on the ground, because that's when you, where you are when you do so. You just admitted you knew you were wrong, and you just admitted you didn't care. Don't do that. Please stop it. Just, just cut it out. I even sent him a message and said, if I was you, I would delete this post today. He left it up. It still may be on there. I hope it's not. Stop doing that. Stop admitting that you know you're doing something wrong in any kind of way, writing, social media, email, don't do it. You have just opened yourself personally up for liability. The door placards on passenger, on all vehicles are important. On a passenger and light truck tire, it tells you what pressure, what size tire, what type of tire, P-metric or light truck. This is an example of a commercial tire placard. On a commercial tire placard, especially on a fire truck, it's really important to understand this right here, and that's an L load range. We're going to talk a little bit more of what, about what that means and things later. It also tells you what size rim you should have and the inflation pressure. And this is rec highly recommended, and I'll explain why I said it that way here in a moment. But you want to stay with this size. There are some opportunities to go from like a 295 to 11R, 22.5 or something, but I would I would highly recommend stay within this realm because now you've got some support if something happens. You decide to go away from this tire, you you and, and away from that recommended load range. You have you're it's just a matter of time before the tire fails. In it literally literally is. You can't go down. You can go up in load range. It you cannot under any circumstances go down. Uh, P metric versus Euro metric versus light truck. Uh, wow. With this, you see a lot of prefixes on passenger and light truck tires. You see a P, sometimes LT. On motorcycle, you'll see MC in this area back here. If you don't see anything, that's a Euro metric. And basically that means it's got a little bit higher load carrying capacity at the same pressure. Uh, down here, you'll see P metric, LT for light truck, ST for trailer. For those of you who have an enclosed or non-enclosed trailer in your personal use, do not put anything on it other than the, a, tr a tire that has ST prefix here because those tires are designed for a free rolling axle that has a lot of side forces and the tread depth is gonna be a little bit lower. You put some of the others on, on there, you're asking for trouble. And of course, T is for temporary spare. And I'm glad that's on here. I can't see anybody, but I need all of you out there to, Think about when was the last time you checked the air pressure in your temporary spare or your full size spare on your personal vehicle or the vehicle that's in your department. And if I could see you, probably no one would raise their hand or maybe one person. I need you guys to do that today. And ladies. <laughs> Load index. With commercial truck tires, you can get the same tire. I know this is a little blurry, but I'm going to give you a better shot later on. And this goes back to load index. It's got E, F, and G. It goes all the way up to L, H. Uh, if your fire apparatus came with an H load range tire, under no circumstances, replace it with the same size, but go to a G. Do not do it. Don't consider it. As a matter of fact, those of you who are within earshot or can view me right now, when you get back to your fleet, and you check on your apparatus, make sure that whatever size tire that's on that door placard is on the vehicle. But in addition to that, make sure whatever load range that's on that door placard is also on that tire on the vehicle. Do not cut yourself short and get a tire that's cheaper, but you say it's the same size and don't, rec don't understand what load range is. That's really important. On a passenger and light truck uh, application, you've got a speed rating, and then here, you've got this number here. This is called uh, a, a load index. And basically these, the numerical part, which goes from one to 150, correlates to the maximum load carrying capacity of that tire at max pressure, at max pressure. And then the alpha that comes after that is correlated with the speed rating. So even on the trucks or the cars that are in your fleet, in your personal use, if it came with a V load range, you don't need to go to an H because it's cheaper, especially in a government vehicle or the vehicle for your company that you work for. You are now, again, opening yourself up for liability. And I'm not saying the tire is going to fail. I'm saying there's a wreck that happens, which this actually happened recently. 
the guy went from an LT tire to a P, no, from a P metric to an LT, put the P metric air pressure in there because that's what's on the door placard. That does not match the load carrying capacity on an LT. He hooked a trailer, he hooked a boat to it, and then he didn't have enough air pressure. The vehicle got squirrely. He lost control, wrecked. We got the phone call. After that happens, it's all over. You ain't got time to do it the right way then. And here's an example of the book that I was saying everyone needs to have. And this is an, ex is an example of what happened here on an LT tire, both of these the same size. An LT tire can go up to 80 PSI, in this case, 75, and it's, it'll carry 3,100 pounds per tire at this air pressure, 75. The max this P metric tire will carry in the same size, except it's P metric, is 2,535, almost 600 pounds per tire less, and the maximum you can put in it is 35 PSI. So before you make a change like that, you're welcome to give me a call, send me an email. I will work with you on that at no charge. I mean, that that is that is something that happens way, way too much now. In my home state of Louisiana, um, people, ha everybody has a pickup truck. They've got a lift kit. They got big 22 inch tires on it. And they don't understand that once you put the bigger tire and wheel, now you've got this extra unsprung weight and increases your braking distance. Also, you when you go to that much bigger tire, you also, if you're going, coming from a 16 or 17 or 18 to a 22 or 24 inch tire, now you've also got to change the, the, the calipers and the rotors on there. So they compensate for that extra weight that you've got, uh, unsprung weight that you've got. And sorry, I'm going fast, but I got a lot I need to cover. Hey, and TJ, uh, there's two questions in the chat, but I can ask those at the end, or I could, if you, would you mind if I ask you them right now? You can ask them right now. I'm good. The two questions are, does vehicle axle weight affect tire pressure? And then the other is, can you comment on the use of nitrogen to fill tires? Okay, I'm going to get the first one first. The vehicle axle weight is incorporated into total GVR on the vehicle weight. So, uh, and that's a, that's, that's a controlled deal there. So whatever's on the, uh, the door placard compensates for that. That's a great question. Now, if you go, we're gonna also talk a little bit more because not only the maximum load carrying capacity of the tire, but we're also gonna talk about the rim. And I know a lot of you change tires and stuff, but how many of you thought about how much load the rim will carry? So, uh, any, and that's why I wanted you to stay with what's on the door placard, because then you're safe. Once you get away from that, that tire size and load recommendation that's on, that's recommended by the vehicle manufacturer, then you, all bets are off after that. You can do it. I'm not saying you can't, but if you do do it, you need to call me or somebody on my staff or email us so that we can guide you through that, because that's a very dark forest. And then the other one was about nitrogen. Um, the question is probably, is it okay to use nitrogen? 100% of the time, yes, you can use nitrogen. It's very effective because it's dry. It's unlike going to the local uh, corner store and, and pumping water out of, the, out of the air chock before you can put air in your tire. But here's the problem with nitrogen. The way that you put nitrogen into a tire is you have to vacuum it out, put in nitrogen, vacuum it out, put in nitrogen, vacuum it out, and then put in nitrogen. You gotta do that three times per tire. Now, most of the tire shops here where I live in Nashville know who I am, and they still do it incorrectly. They just top it off with some nitrogen, put your green cap on there, and charge you to $20 or $30 per, per tire. And they really hadn't put really a lot of nitrogen in there. Also, what we're breathing is about 78% nitrogen, 16% uh, oxygen, and 4% other impurities. So you're only paying for 22% more nitrogen than what we're breathing. But those were two great questions. Uh, <clears throat> here on the wheels, also you've got to be cognizant of what size wheels you're using. This is in passenger light truck. We're going to get to commercial. Now, both of these are uh, 265, 70, 17. Obviously, they're 17 inch wheels. And both of them are a, on a recommended wheel width of eight inches. But what if you get custom wheels and you decide that with this LT tire, I'm going to go to a seven. Oh, well, actually, you're going to go here and you got a P metric tire and it came with a nine by 17 inch wheel and you want to put the LT tire on there. You cannot do that. That bead will eventually unseat 
from the wheel and have an instantaneous air loss. And uh, here tells the range of rims. So all this LT tire will use from a seven to an eight and a half inch rim width on a 17 inch diameter wheel. This tire right here can use a seven to nine inch width because even though they're the same size aesthetically, uh, this one has a softer sidewall, which is why you can go to the nine inch wheel there. This one has a much stiffer sidewall, much more robust because it's a light truck tire. Uh, you guys have seen this, uh, this writing on the sidewall of the tire and it says this tire will carry, I don't know, 5,000 pounds at 110 PSI. That does not necessarily mean that's what you should put in there. And under no circumstances should you ever ever, ever, never, ever, ever go over that maximum pressure that's on the sidewall of that tire. Do not do it. Don't think about it. Don't do it. Now, let's look at the commercial side. And we talked earlier about a G versus an eight load range. And in a single, this tire in a G, it'll only take 95 PSI. It's not gonna take 120. It doesn't matter what the door placard say, that says, that's all this tire is gonna take. And this tire will carry almost 7,000 pounds at 95 PSI. But what if the, the vehicle came with an H load range and it'll carry 7,600, almost 600, what? 650 pounds per tire more, but it takes 110. Now, if you have 105 in the H, then it's only gonna carry 7,400. If you've only got 100 in the H rated tire, it's only gonna carry about 7,200. But you can't put the G load range tire, even though it's the same size, and try to put that 110 in, it's still not gonna carry that. It's still only gonna carry that 6,940 PSI. And if you do do that, the probability of that tire failing while in operation, what I mean is why the, the whole team the firefighters are driving that down the road. And of course, you never hit a pothole. They're going to hit a pothole. That tire's going to fail. The vehicle's probably going to roll over, hurt, kill, or injure everyone on that vehicle. And it's going to be your fault because you put too much. It's going to be somebody's fault for purchasing the cheaper tire. And it's going to be somebody's fault for putting the air pressure that's not recommended. If you got any questions, again, you guys can call us. I'm up 24-7, literally. If you don't believe me, call me one night. I'm always on the phone with somebody in Europe. I was on the phone with Taiwan last night. Call me. Don't freaking take a chance. Or best case scenario, since we travel so much, email us. We'll get back with you within 24, 48 hours. If you put a phone number on there, that means we think you mean for us to call you, you will get a phone call. So if you don't want a phone call, don't put your daggum phone number on the email. Okay, uh, we talked about rims. If you replace the rims on your truck, and that happens occasionally, more often here lately, especially with like aluminum rims instead of steel, rims have different load carrying capacity and different air pressure ratings. So you try to get a tire that'll carry 11,000 pounds uh, and, and it'll, it'll air up to 140, for example, this rim can't go on that tire. We're going to talk more about that here in a minute. So let's talk about the rims on a commercial truck tire. You got all these tires that are fit on a 22.5 by 9 inch wheel. Uh -huh. But when you look over here, if you got this tire, it'll fit on an eight and a quarter and also a nine inch by 22.5. But if you're trying to put this tire on there, it'll fit both. But if you try to put this tire on the nine and three quarter inch wheel by 22.5, that ain't gonna work. So it's really important to check the wheels to know to understand what the load carrying capacity are of the wheels on your apparatus, also the air pressure. And where can you find that information? It's stamped on the freaking wheel. And if none of you have ever looked, I need you to put an eyeball on that very, very, very quickly to make sure that you're not overinflating the wheel, but putting the right inflation pressure in the tire. Uh, I'm gonna go through this. Uh, I know these are starting to become popular. These little micro vans, I've seen a lot of them in, as, and they're, they're using them for a little bit of everything now. And that's cool because they're practical, they're cheap, they, they get pretty good fuel economy. But the problem that I'm seeing with them right now is 
their, the tires on them are being replaced with the wrong tire. Every time I stop next to a light, I look down at one and there's almost a hundred percent chance that if it does not have the OEM tire on it, it's going to have a freaking passenger light or a light truck tire on it and it won't match what's on there. And I'm going to talk about it here for a second. This is an example. This is called a Euro commercial. The C right here is not C load range. There's no P or no LT in front of that, which means it's Eurometric. And then the C in a Eurometric stands for commercial. In this particular instance, there is no P2257516 or LT2257516. They will carry as much a load as this Eurometric. It won't happen. So if you're loading it up the same way, those tires are probably going to fail. You're going to hit a pothole. Something negative is going to happen. And you now replace it with a passenger or light truck tire, you can actually fill out one of these forms, but you do not stick it over the original DO, the original door placard. You don't do that. You put it underneath so that when you take it to the shop, they're supposed to look at the door placard. They don't, but they're supposed to. It'll tell them what air pressure they're supposed to put in those tires. And actually, here's an example. You've got a P metric tire here, you've got a, a Euro metric, you've got an LT, and then you've got a Euro commercial. They all look like the same tire. None of these tires are the same, not one of them, from the P metric to the Euro C. And you can see up here, this has got two because it, if you can put it on a single application or a dual. The single application is the higher number, which correlates to a maximum load the smaller numbers if it's in a dual application so that you don't put as much load on the duals and have the sidewalls touch. But you can see this number is much higher than all these others, even than the light truck tire, significantly higher. Don't make this mistake. If you have these in your fleet, make freaking sure you've got the tire that's on the door placard here that matches the, what you got on the sidewall here on the tire. That is not optional. That's a mistake that's happening quite a bit. And don't be shocked if you call the dealer you bought them from and they know they don't have a clue what you're talking about. So passenger and light truck tires are gonna lose about one PSI per month. That's why it's recommended to check the air pressure every month. If you go six months and you don't check the air pressure in a passenger light truck tire, you're down six PSI. Commercial truck tires are gonna lose about two PSI per month. If you go six months without checking the pressure in a commercial truck tire, you're going to be down 12 PSI. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Because once you get down to 20% with insufficient air pressure to carry the load, you're doing irreparable damage to the tire. And now you've damaged all the tires on that vehicle that are more than 20% underinflated. You're also going to lose about one PSI for every 10 degree drop in temperature. For those of you who live in the north and the northeast, and maybe it's a little bit on the west coast or in Canada, it is imperative to check the air pressure, check it cold. Ooh, I was able to squeeze all that in and I, I think I got five minutes, five or 10 minutes of extra time to answer questions. There's, there's been a nice, a couple chats, excuse me, a couple of nice questions in the chat bar, but this is an opportunity for everyone to ask TJ questions. We've got, another um, 10 minutes or so. Ah, so, good, um, I made it. Here we got one from Matthew Nardone. Thank you, Matt, for asking the question. Can fire truck tires be retreaded? Uh, yes, they can, uh, not on the steer, on the drives. And that's something you guys would want to discuss with your vendor with whoever runs your fleet. And if you guys can't figure it out, you can always email me. My email is easy to remember. It's the tire guy at yahoo.com. But tires spell with a Y. So it's T-H-E-T-Y-R-E-G-U-Y at yahoo.com. You can just send me that uh, what you're trying to do and a phone number because that's going to warrant a phone call so I can walk you guys through it. That's a great question. Uh, most, A lot of them don't. Some of them do. It depends on what's applicable. And a lot of people think that retreads are dangerous. And that's usually the, the guys have been around a while like me. <laughs> and, uh, but retreads nowadays are so freaking good. They're, man, they're as good. I'm just going to say it. They're as good as a virgin tire. 
They are. So when you guys say, when someone's, and someone's saying it right now, oh, there's no way, no way a retread is as good as a virgin tire. Well, next time you're driving down the road and you see pieces of tire, I want you to look at those pieces. If there's wire connected to it, that is a virgin tire. If it's just a rubber, that's a retread. You're going to easily see there's almost no retread pieces along the roadway. And that's because people think because it's a virgin tire, I don't need to pay as much attention to it and they don't check the air pressure, they don't do proper maintenance, and then those blow up. But if they got a retread, everybody's a little apprehensive because it's on a commercial truck and there's a lot of, a lot of weight on it, then they check it more, which is why you see fewer uh, disablements with uh, a retread tire than you do a uh, commercial grade virgin tire. All right, we got a couple more questions uh, from John Witt. Is there any specifics on the rubber compound for fire apparatuses to be recommended? Uh, man, that's a great question. I've never been asked that, but I do have an answer. <laughs> uh, the... Okay. Uh, on commercial tires, and I'm going to stop sharing so y'all can see my face. Because some, some of this I need to have some expressions. Uh, Yes, the compounds that are in commercial uh, applications, especially heavy applications like in fire apparatus type tires, they have a, the compound is more cut chip resistant. And Goodyear does a great job of, of producing tires specifically for fire apparatus. Michelin, Firestone, Bridgestone, they do too. Uh, but Goodyear seems to kind of take the lead on government type applications. But you can't go in and you can say, hey, I, I need a tire for a fire apparatus. And that's how you should state it. And they'll probably try to talk to an engineer or tech service person. And I hate to say it, try not to talk to a freaking salesperson because they just want to sell you their whatever brand they're working for. Call, find out uh, what the 1-800 number is or the warranty services, call them and they can explain it a lot better. But you can't go in and say, hey, I want a specific compound because all that information is proprietary. Great, next. Can you comment on tire minders that equalize pressure like Crossfire? Oh yeah, I recommend those, but you still gotta check the pressure because if you don't, uh, man, you now you got two tires <laughs> that are down. But anything to bring your, to, to make you think about tire pressure is going to be a value. But the best way is to bend the knee and check that air pressure every month. And one of the things that I recommend is add an extra two PSI. As long as you don't go over the maximum air pressure rating that's written on the sidewall of the tire, I say put an extra two PSI because that buys you an extra 30 days. That's a great question. Awesome. Next from Michael Wassel. We have some surplus military trucks for high water rescue. They are M923 from the 1980s. Many of them come with tires that are original Michelins. We have a very difficult time getting replacements due to the age, and many of them are new surplus that are over 10 years old. What other options do we have? Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna probably have to go to a different wheel size. I would not, in that particular operation with tires that are going, I would never, ever, ever, never, ever use a tire on that type of vehicle that's more than six years old. I just wouldn't. Sooner or later, you're going to be out doing your job, trying to rescue somebody in, in a flooded situation, and then boom, you're going to need some help. Uh, just don't. The ones that are more than 10 years old, they got to go. I know it sounds expensive, and it is, but get rid of that crap, man. Uh, I don't want to see you in a courtroom because the, the steer tire blew out and you ran over some kid and you're trying to do your job and rescue that same freaking kid. Uh, get rid of them. If you're not sure, uh, man, call me. I'm going to put my email address in the chat. That's good. And, that, uh, and anybody can contact me if they have, if we don't, if, when we run out of time, which we will in a minute. And TJ, this uh, is great rapid fire. So I'm going to keep throwing them at you. Go, go, brother. Comment on mixing brands on a vehicle. Can we put one on the front and another on the back? You can put them on by axle. You can put like a Michelin on a steer axle and then uh, a, a Bridgestone on drives. Is We don't like it when you do that, but that's more acceptable than putting a Michelin on the left side of the steer and a, and a Firestone on the right. So you can mix them by axle. Awesome. All right, the next one. How should tire pressure be adjusted when you purchase a standard F350, but then run the truck loaded all the time with an extendo bed, truck cap, and equipment? Man, I love that question. What you can do is weigh the truck. 
uh, go to a scale somewhere. The ideal way is to weigh it by wheel position, but that's not always an option. So weigh it by axle. And then if you send me an email that tells me what the front and rear axle weight is, and I need to know what the gross vehicle weight is, front and rear, because you can get that off the door placard. Oh, well, you if, if it's empty, you can get it off the door placard. If it's loaded, just weigh the front and rear. Send me what those weights are. And then I need to know what size and load range. So if it's a light truck tire, I need to know if it's an LT, 265, 75, 16, and then it's a E load range. If it's a commercial truck, like a fire apparatus, I need to know what that weight is on the front. And I need to know it's a 11R225 in a GHL load range. And then I can tell you what air pressure you should run. TJ, you're crushing it right now. Next one. Can you clarify tire age recommendations? Remove from rim and check fire truck tires at and seven years or replace? Question mark? Yes. Uh, yeah. Follow the NFPA policy on that, which is seven years. And then I think on tanker trucks, it's five. I think on tanker trucks, unless I'm wrong. Great. Next. If a manufacturer states to not use a specific brand of tire, will using that brand hurt the AHJ? Uh, I don't. I, I think they're talking about an apparatus manufacturer. Uh, sometimes that happens. And the only time I'm aware that they would say not to use a specific brand by name is if there's a recall on that brand. Uh, Peter, not Peterbilt, but Freightliner has a recall right now on certain Freightliner tractors on the steer with a certain brand and tread pattern tire right now. So if you're not sure if there's a recall on a truck or a tire or something, you can go to uh, NHTSA, NHTSA, and then you can put in that tire or that truck. If you put in the truck, put the VIN number in, you put the tire in, just put the brand and the tire and the size, and it'll tell you if it's a recall or an investigation on that. Great. Next question. Commercial tire pressures versus axle load? Question mark. Uh, yeah, you want to weigh the axle, the whole thing. And then uh, that book that I showed you guys earlier, which this is the most recent version, the passing the Tire and Rim Association. I know it's backwards, but anyway, the Tire and Rim Association Annual Yearbook. And it'll once you weigh it, it that book is what I used to be on the board of directors of a bunch of engineers. They set the standards on all tires and all wheels sold in North America and Canada. And then there's JATMA and Japan, ETRTO. But if you don't want to use it because it's engineering, it's boring you, just send me an email and I'll send you the answer. Awesome. Next one. Can you put aluminum rims on an F450 in the rear? We've been told it cannot stack them and will come with outside aluminum and inside steel. Uh, a lot of them won't do it, but as long as that rim can carry the load, yes, you can. It's all about load and load carrying capacity, not the, the, the type, the material that the rim's made of. Next one. In the north, in the north, the outside temperature can be very cold, say negative 40 degrees Celsius, and the vehicle is parked in a heated garage. Please comment on managing tire pressures in this case. Simple. Even if the garage is heated, that's still considered cold. Put your pressure in then. And sometimes you'll get into situations where it's really cold at night, and then it's warm in the day. Your TPMS light comes on while you're sleeping that night. And then as you take off in the vehicle, the tire warms up and it goes off. The big thing is that you're maintaining some semblance of air pressure. If they're in the garage, go ahead and set your pressure because it's not going to be more than 20 degree difference anyway. So which would be two PSI in a car or truck. Uh, make sure you check it cold, even if it is in the garage. That's a great question. I get that a lot. Love it. All right. We're going to go maybe a one or two minutes past your time because we got a lot of good questions here. Good job, everyone. As an EVT, I'd like to learn that I'd like, I'd like to learn all that I can about tire design, construction, and load ratings. Do you, your company, offer one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings for tutoring on tires? Of course we do. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to the tire guy. Come on. Yeah, come on, man. We also will travel to your location if you want to have your agency and several others participate. We will do a, a one, two, or three-day class, and we'll do it hands-on. If you hold all your scrap tires, we'll show you how to look through them and tell what happened because what you think they're coming off for may not be what they're coming off for at all. That is awesome. We would love to do, we love that. And we, me and my whole staff would be there and we'd have the same enthusiasm that you're seeing right now. Good stuff. Next one, fire apparatus curb tires all the time. Can you comment on sidewall damage and how much is allowed? 
Yes, as long as you cannot see the body plies, it can it can cut chip and stuff like that. But as long as it's not punctured all the way through, or it tears off the surface material, and you see the body plies, if you don't see the one of those things, you are good to go. Keep going. All right, let's keep in the thirty seconds here. Good job. Can you fix a speed rated tire with a plug patch? Yes, you can repair a speed rated tire with a plug plat plug patch. I took a slide out because I wanted to focus on commercial, but some of the manufacturers say you lose the speed rating. In other words, if it's a, a W speed rating for speeds up to 168, mile, uh, 168 miles an hour, then if you repair it, a lot of half, about half the manufacturers say then max speed is only 85. Some of them say it's still 168. It is not 168. They do that for marketing purposes so that you buy their product. Like something happens, I show up, I'm, I'm going to disagree, and somebody's going to have to pay the piper. Let's what do, do one think, more. What do you think of super singles versus dual tires on a rear axle? As long as they're regional or local, you don't want to put super singles on a long haul because if something happens, it's going to be 24 hours before you get another one. I, don't, I know Michelin has this thing, says they'll get you one. It's going to be 24 hours at a minimum, but... I've driven commercial trucks with the super singles. Man, they track really well and they ride so smooth. So that's something you want to look at. If you got an operation that's local or maybe regional, maybe in one or between one or two cities, not intrastate, but within one or two cities, uh, yeah, you can use them if you like because they're going to save you on weight and they just feel really good when you. All right, two more. Sure, Old great. School. Let's go. If the car tire says thirty-five psi, was told to put in thirty-two for a softer ride, is that? BS question. Mark. Yes, that's BS big time. You never lower air pressure just for the, the sake of ride quality. And that's what y'all remember the Ford uh, Firestone fiasco where you had vehicles rolling over killing people. That's the exact scenario that happened. Speaking of tread patterns, do you recommend anything specific for fire apparatus? Call me. We'll talk about your fleet or email me. Send me your phone number. We'll talk about your fleet and what you want out of your tires. And then I can make you some specific recommendations. Where can someone obtain a copy of that yearbook? Uh, email me. It's usually sold by the, the Tire and Rim Association, uh, and it's $131. If you're a member, if you're not a member, I think it's 140 bucks or something. They will send it straight to you. Go to uh, USTRA.org or just Google Tire and Rim Association Annual Yearbook, and it'll take, tell them you talk to TJ and you want a copy. Love it. All right. One final one. Great job, everyone, with all the questions. Is the replacement interval the same for airport crash trucks as type one fire apparatus? Yes, sir. That's a great question. I've never been asked that before. So you guys are trying to impress me because you're trying to make me think you're smarter than the other EVT people I talk to, but that's okay. I like it. <laughs> All right, TJ, man, <laughs> you just put on a masterclass here. You got any final, final comments and words, and then we're going to jump into a just about an eight minute break here, everyone really, really, really important for everyone, not only to check the air pressure monthly and the vehicles on your job, also your personal vehicles. They're just as important. Don't use those rope plugs. Make sure you follow pop, proper procedures on repairing the tire, especially if you're like me and you ride a motorcycle and you do your own tire work. Yeah, but it was something that one thing I need everyone to do to freaking today check the pressure in your spare tire on your personal vehicle and also check the date if you have an older vehicle if that that tire if that vehicle's more than 10 years old that freaking spare tire is going to be more than 10 years old get rid of that freaking thing that's all i got